All right, everybody, we're pretty much almost done with our 360 rig. Um, so as I mentioned in the previous video, we now have our full rotation and we are happy with that. We're happy with the way that the drawing substitutions are positioned and the way that the pegs and deformations are positioned as well. So now that we have this full rotation, we are going to do the next step, which is pasting over these keyframes to do a reversed cycle of this entire thing here. Um, so basically we have the full rotation. We're going to make sure that we take all of those keyframes. Let's just go over and zoom in a little bit more to see them properly. These are stop motion keyframes. I'm going to turn them on as motion keyframes, first of all, because this will allow me uh, later on when I copy and paste keyframes to have these already interpolate the motion between them. So I'm going to simply click on set motion keyframe right here. You should have your keyframes now showing as black with a little line transitioning in between. So I'm going to select all these again and copy those. I'll be going over to the next position that we have over here inside of our timeline. And what I'll be doing is pasting them over into this one, but not a regular paste. We are going to right click and choose paste reverse. So this will actually take all of my keys, but paste them in the opposite timing. So paste reverse, this creates another cycle where my character actually turns to the side first and then goes back to its original position. So I'm really having this cycle starting here. The reason why it is offset by one key over here is basically that I had this little key here doubled over on this side. So we want to keep that one to make sure that we can uh, reuse that for flipping and transitioning a little bit better over to the next few keyframes. So if you want, if it's going to make it easier for you, you can even put it at 60. So that way they will keep um, positioning the keyframes on tens. But again, you could always set markers down um, for these, just delay them by one frame basically to indicate the keyframes. Um, so now that we have this, our work is not done. It is just rotating back into uh, the front view again. So we want to uh, make sure that we flip this character over once we reach the copy of the back pose here. So I'm going to just open up the structure of my character and I'm going to take that top peg. We have not put any animation on our top peg. Uh, if you have, it's probably best at this point that you go and add a second one to create the flip specifically. Um, so right now mine doesn't have any on there. I'm going to go and remove the keyframes from all of these right here. Make sure you don't do this from the collapse timeline, otherwise you will be removing the keyframes underneath inside of your structure. So let's remove those pressing F7. And now at this particular frame, I will be going over to flip my character to the other side by putting a minus one value in the scale. So by doing this, my character flips and shifts a little bit over on this side. It's nothing too major, nothing to worry about too much. And then it will keep doing the motion and doing the full rotation. So exactly the same keys as what we had over on this side, only this time it will just keep rotating. So you can see already how that is much more uh, efficient and much easier than going to do exactly the work that we've done up until now, but opposite uh, without doing a single flip on the main peg. So we're re really gaining a lot of time by doing this. It is uh, of course, not a situation that can be applied to every single rig. Um, if you had a character that was super asymmetrical, that had a huge arm over on one side, uh, think uh, 
William Birkin from Resident Evil kind of uh, feel here. Um, so that would definitely be a character that would be harder to rotate with a flip. But with this one, um, pretty easy. He's pretty much symmetrical, so much easier uh, to do something like this. Um, now, once we have this key here, probably a good idea to bake this one as well inside all of our other keyframes here. I'm just going to set one down for every frame. Here we have all of those. I can make sure that these are uh, interpolated as well. Not that we'll be uh, using those much, uh, especially for the flipping, but for positioning the character, always uh, a good thing to have. So now that I have my full flip, uh, let's have a look here at um, anything that we might want to fix for creating the interpolation. We can see the reflection of the eye should be on the right side of the eyes here. So of course when I flip over my character there are certain details that should transition more smoothly such as the rotation, uh, such as the reflection on the eyes um, so I may want to create a new drawing for this, um, going into the library, making sure I have one that can use the opposite reflection. I'll just swap over to select that one on the frames that have the flipped view. So not just the last one. We actually need to go and final drawing. We are applying it from frame 51. So I can change that right away to be uh, exposing my drawing number two here and I'll be doing the same over with this one here and exposing drawing number two to have the full view using the reflection over on the right side. Anything that was using uh, more uh, swapped over pieces, so pieces that were actually uh, asymmetrical, you would need to either create new drawings or flip them. Um, it's really up to you at this point which one you want to use. Um, but generally speaking, having um, having split drawings like this works pretty well, especially for simple things like these. So um, also when you want to flip over certain things using the pegs, it might not always be ideal, especially if it's something that's connecting uh, to, let's say, the arm here. Um, I may have a tattoo on my character's body. If the tattoo is supposed to show up on the other side, it's most likely going to be attached to the arm. So uh, you may have to duplicate that tattoo, connect it over to the other one, and then use uh, separate drawings for these. Probably best that you do it this way for things like that. So um, we're pretty much done with our 360 over here, we have the full rotation. Let's just uh, go over one more thing inside of uh, the general structure and how we set up our uh, different poses as well to see just how we are going to uh, set those up on the timeline. I'll see you guys in the next video.